Some men steal money, some men steal lives, and some men steal something even more precious than both. Is that good? No, no need to sleep. <laughs> it was a warm June morning in Fort Collins, Colorado, when the police department received a terrifying call. A woman who had called over a landscaper to fix her sprinkler system saw that same man in her security camera footage enter her bedroom and steal her underwear. The police immediately responded to her residence to investigate. Apparently, the woman had allowed her landscaper, Randall Woodard, access to her home as he needed to tinker with the hot water heater. Randall was still working when the woman needed to leave for a doctor's appointment. So she told Randall that she'll leave him to work and requested he close the garage door before he leaves. Ten minutes had barely passed when the woman received a notification from her home security camera app. It had detected motion in her bedroom. And that's when Randall was caught pink handed. In the footage, he is seen clearly taking a pair of pink Victoria's Secret underwear for unclear reasons. The police contacted Randall and requested he come down to the police station. Um, I'm going to close this just so we got some privacy. Um, so I just want to, the reason that we're here is I want to talk to you about um, some work that you did, I guess, a couple of days ago, the 2nd of June, so almost a week now. Um, and at this point, you're not in trouble or anything. I just need to get your side of the story so you don't have to answer my questions if you don't want to. It's voluntary that you're here. I just need to get your side of the story. So, um, like I said, feel free to not answer my questions. Um, at this point, you're free to go whenever you want. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, the complaint essentially is that on uh, the 2nd of June, you were doing some work out. I think it was 3225 Shorebird or sh some somewhere, something like that. Does that sound familiar? I don't remember the exact address. Silverthorne? Silverthorn, yes, sir. Um, and one of the occupants had some concerns that she had entered their bedroom uh, and taken some items. So um, they called us, asked us to reach out to you, and that's why I've kind of been trying to get in touch with you since then. So I just wanted to get your side of the story and see what information you knew or if that was accurate or what was Well, I was supposed to meet a girl named Piper there. Um, so when we pulled up there, there was a girl in the driveway changing the license plate or something. I said, hey, are you Piper? And she said no. Um, but she said she could let us into the house. And so I, she let us in the house and then she said she had to go, so she took off. Okay. Um, I went downstairs to find the mechanical room to turn the water on. And I've only been there like one other time last year to blow it out. Um, so I went downstairs and opened the door to see if, you know, where the mechanical room was. Uh -huh. Found it, turned the water on, um, came back up, tried to run the clock, and nothing was working. So then we went around the house, walking around the house to see if um, the wire had been damaged or something or what was wrong, trying to find the valve boxes. And we noticed in the backyard they had put in window wells. So then I called Ian and explained to him that probably the wire was broken because nothing was working. Mm. And then we followed, we went back into the garage and followed the wire where it comes out of the house. And right as it came out of the house by bushes, it was all cut up. So we fixed that and then we went back into the garage and started running the sprinklers again. Um, and then we shut the garage door and we got out of there. And that was that, huh? Okay, so you guys were there doing the sprinkler work then, I guess. Right, that, turning them on. Yeah, that's um, that's what she said, and, and I don't have all the details. Like I said, I wasn't there, and it sounds like there's multiple different people that live there, which kind of makes sense as to why I guess you were looking for somebody and somebody else contacted you the way she explained well, it. Well, I've been ago. trying since April 28th. That was when I first called them to set it up. Oh, really? And they were the, my last one to do um, from your Realty. Okay. Yeah, um, Just I guess just give you some background because I – she was explaining it to me, and I didn't know how much you were aware, but that makes sense now that you're explaining it, that she said there's several different girls that live there, and they kind of come and go um, type of situations. So 
I don't know who Piper is. That's not who. I, I never met her. Oh, you never, you no, never she never showed up. So. <laughs> she, yeah, she, she may not even live there anymore. Who knows? Um, so you find the mechanical room downstairs, she said? Yes. Do whatever you need to in there, go back up, and then that's when you realize there's still, like, nothing's coming on, so you assume that there's some damage somewhere. Yes. Find find the wires, correct those, or fix those, uh -huh. I guess. Was that well, help? And then we had to fix another broken head by the um, window wells that they put in. But okay, so they probably damaged it when they put the window wells in there, huh? No, because the, the garage door comes out, and that's where the wires were, and the, but the window wells were on the back side of the house. Oh, okay. But, you know, the backflow was on that side, so I figured the wires got damaged while they were doing it, but it wasn't mm -hmm. there. It was over by the garage door. <laughs> okay. So, but outside the house there you, is where the wires are located? Correct. Just on the front side. You fix those, and then you go back to the mechanical room to, or no? We went back to the mechanical room and then um, just turned it on and ran. Then it, everything was working. Okay, so once it was working, that's that's the only reason you guys were there. Just turn it on and yep. then close the door and head it out. Yep, close the garage door. I couldn't lock our front door. Couldn't get the lock to lock. So okay. Um, did you go anywhere else in the house when you were in there? Um, just downstairs. To the mechanical room. Correct. Okay. Anywhere else? Well, I had to it? open the doors to find the mechanical room. Okay. Did did anybody show you where the mechanical room was? Um, mm -mm. No? No. That girl put on her license plate and jetted. Okay. So when you went downstairs, then I, I'm not, uh, I mean, I know what my my stuff looks like at my house, but everybody's different. So can you describe the mechanical room? It just has, like, the furnace and the hot water heater and where the water comes into the house. So pretty clear when it when you go in then just the all that all the mechanical stuff yeah. so to speak yeah. um okay no reason it would be confused with any other room mm -hmm. okay so um i guess i'll just cut right to the chase man so we've got some information that you were in some other rooms uh -huh. aside from the mechanical room so um I'm going to give you an opportunity to correct me if I'm wrong or or just tell me what's what's going on if there's more to the story. No, this you're, is, you're this right. is Okay. So this this is your opportunity to give me your side of the story, okay? Cuz I've got her side of the story. I've been Well, she she called me that night, so I'm sure you know. Who who called you? Somebody. I don't know who. Okay. Just asked me if I was the one that was there to turn the sprinklers on. Okay. So I'm guessing that's probably the complainant. Uh, I don't believe so, but I think it's probably, I think it's somebody else that lives in the house. Um, but anyway, um, so were you anywhere else in the house? Yes, sir. Okay. Can you explain to me what happened there? Um, well, to make a long story short, I, I was dumb. And he had a the guys that we go camping and fishing with, because we had a four-day weekend, um, we made no bet, and I took a pair of women's underwear. Okay. From the house? Correct. Okay. And that was part of a bet with your friends? Yeah. What was kind of the backstory there? Mm -hmm. By the liquor, whoever won bought the liquor, one of us bought the liquor for the weekend. What, what was the bet? Who could come up with a pair of women's underwear? With the guys you work with, or no, just no. these people in, the, in my neighborhood, okay. and most of it came from sitting in the garage drinking. Okay, were you drinking that night or that day? I guess no. Okay, no. so sober when the incident sober, occurred, yes, sir. Okay, so um, yeah, I mean, I appreciate you being honest with me, and that is that is the reason that we're here. Yeah, um, obviously. Uh -huh. yeah. When she called, I could tell that something was wrong. Yeah, it, it was a different individual. I'm, I'm, I know that for a fact that um, that called. However, I know that they had the information, and that's why they were calling. Um, so, like I said, I just want to get your side of the story and see, one, if it did, in fact, happen, what the reasoning was for it. it and happen. Okay. Do you still have those? No. Okay, what happened to them? Put them in the trash. 
Okay, so no chance of getting them back to the victim. Yeah. Okay. So you mentioned that you you said you were dumb, made kind of a dumb dumb choice, I yeah, guess. It, you know, I, I they're I, they, I hang out with 25, 26, 27 year olds and I pretty much yeah, stoop way below right where I ever should have. Okay. So yeah, the problem with that is um she had a camera in her room. I figured if she called me because no one was there. You know? Yeah, and again, it wasn't her call, but she called us. And uh, um, yeah, so I've kind of I've, I've seen the video. It's pretty pretty clear. Obviously. So I wanted to I wanted to give you a side a chance to be truthful and, and yeah. give me your side of the story because there's always there's always two sides, and you know maybe there's well, some. There's no there's no excuse. I'm like, not there's no excuse for what I did. Okay, well. I appreciate your honesty. Um, unfortunately, that is a, a felony. Really? Yes, sir. Um, so at this time, you are under arrest. Can you just stand up? Let me the floor. Go ahead and turn face away for me. You know, lock your hands on the back of your head. I'll explain all that to you. I just want to make sure you don't have any weapons or anything. Like that. No, I'm not trying to make it into something that's not. I just want to make sure we're both sitting here. Just phone and wallet in your, in your pockets there? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, favor, just leave this hand up here. Look over your left so I don't clip your ear there. Cut your shirt instead. Appreciate you. Follow this way back. So the felony is for burglary. Really? Okay. Yes, sir. You entered her bedroom without her permission, stole her items without her permission, and obviously, like you said, it's as you said, it was a dumb mistake. But um, you can see why she would be concerned about I that. I, I'm sure she felt a lot of it. Yes, sir. Well, I appreciate your cooperation. So what we're gonna do? Um, we'll walk out to the car. Um, we'll go over to the jail and get you booked in, but I'm going to document in the report that you were cooperative, um, and that will go along with the judge. I don't know what your criminal history is like or if you I have, don't have, have any. any. Okay. So that'll go a long way. So just be honest with them like you were with me. Um, it kind of is what it is at this point. Am but, I spending the night? Uh, that I don't know. So, uh, and we, we can walk out here. So what will happen is, um, there'll be some people at the jail there. They work for the courts, right? They're part of pretrial services, so you'll meet with them. And what they'll do is, uh, for some charges, they can set a bond. For others, they cannot. This is one that they likely will be able to. So my, my, it's not up to me, but my guess is, to answer your question, yes, you'll be out today. Um, they'll be able to set a bond as long as you can post that bond, whatever it might be. Um, you'll be out probably before I'm even done. I think. Um, but at that point, it'll just be your responsibility to show up for your book dates. Okay. And they'll they'll explain all that to you, obviously. Randall Woodard was sentenced for attempted burglary, a felony. While he faced a possible three-year prison sentence, the plea deal he took led to a sentence of two years of supervised probation.